This is the Podcraft Beer Show for Monday, May 17th, 2021. Episode 44 has special guest Josh joining us to try one Imperial Stout recipe brewed in five different aged barrels over 14 months. It's the Pod Craft Beer Show, where we talk about craft beer from Southern California and beyond. I'm your host, Chris. Got your other host, Charlie. How y'all doing? We got tech guy, Steve. Hello. Hello, hello. Special guest. And we got special guest, Josh. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me again. That's your pain. Always a fun time. (laughs) For sure. We had to bring in some reinforcements today. Some stout reinforcements. We, um, today we're, uh, we're going to tackle some, uh, uh, Southern Grist and Horace Stouts, specifically the Stay Fly set, Charlie. Yeah, and our and our washdown is going to be Montucky Cold Snacks. Yes, a uh, little digging it. So the um, the the breakdown of the set today is um, uh, it started off as an Imperial Stout um, uh, collaboration between Southern Grist and Horace. Uh, they ended up putting these uh, um, the same stout in five different barrels: uh, Willet uh, Willet Rye Whiskey, Knob Creek. Uh, Waterloo Antique Gin, uh, Traverse City Weeded Bourbon, uh, and finally Willet uh, Experimental Weeded Bourbon. So give each one of these a taste. uh, It's a lot of beers. It's a lot of beers. So let's hear it. Sip up there, dude. So there we are. So the uh, the first one, Charlie, is the uh, Waterloo Antique Gin. Yeah, I've already poured them, so you guys help yourself. Got uh, anything to say? It's gin. It's yeah, ginny. Yeah, yeah, you can. You can taste yeah, that gin. Comes right through. Sweet. I'm excited. Yeah, you Let can me de- try it. Definitely taste the gin. It smells I like. I don't know if I can I smell gin. Smell. I smell barrel. Right? I see, yeah. Definitely smell barrel. But I, 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 I can't pick up like. No, it doesn't Whoa. really. Gin doesn't really have a. Whoa. It kind of has a smell, but not a, a heavy smell. I'm going to say Chip no more. to that one. <laughs> well, if you don't like gin. <laughs> I like gin. It's wow. It's different because it's got. It doesn't have that like nutty as much mm-hmm. as a a bur- like we're typically used to like a bourbon. It's very dry. We're typically like it's yeah, no, very yeah, really dry, dry on the back end. We're typically huh? used to like a dozen adjuncts, is what we're that too. Yeah, so none of these are going to have adjuncts. <laughs> they're, so they're all just straights, the same uh, same imperial stout then placed in five different barrels, and they didn't adjunct any of them. So they just wanted to show off the characteristics of the uh, of the barrel. It is weird to have a heavy stout just have a dry finish like that. You're so used to it yeah. sitting on your tongue and hanging around, and this is just like, Wick, I'm gone. Wow. <laughs> it is. It's super dry. Wow. That stout's great, though. I mean, I really like the uh, – it's definitely a big stout. Yeah, it it's, it's a it's – a, you can t- – the base beers there, I'm really excited about the rest of these. I mean, I'm you know, glad if they, we... If they threw some peanuts and uh, vanilla and cacao in there, this would be rocking. <laughs> so it's got a little bit of a bite. You know, I mean, I think uh, yeah. I, I was... Um, I, I, don't, I don't know that I'm a big gin fan. Um, I could probably, if I had no fingers at all, I could count on those fingers how many times I've drank gin. Um, no, I think I, I think I had a tangerine tonic, and I was like, "Why would anybody drink pine salt?" I, I, I do, I do enjoy a gin and tonic. That would yeah. be if I'm ever going to drink like a hard alcohol drink. That's that's kind of my go-to. It's what mm-hmm. Mae West used to um, drink. And I'll even cut gin with just like a, a Lacroix. That's not a bad yeah. go either. And so I, I enjoy, I'm enjoying like this. I don't yeah. know if I could do that. I, now, it, it, comparing it to a bourbon barrel or a whiskey barrel. Right, I'm. It's not really a comparison, just because it's a totally different characteristic in it. It's that dryness is just like I don't know how I feel about a chocolatey dryness. Yeah. No, it's super dry. Like it's. Um, it's. It I, just. It just didn't do it for me. I mean, I. Gonna... I. I, I got to have a little bit more flavor in there than that. I am unfortunately. It's. It's out of my range of. Uh, Wait, hey, where, what are you waiting? Where are you going? Oh, Slim? I'm sorry. Fill her up. Well, sure. Yeah, here you go. Yeah, that's good. That's good. What's this? Which here. one's this? Charlie, we're, would you like? Uh, we're going to number two. Read will, it off. Will it rye whiskey? That didn't take long for Charlie to, to shift along. out of the... Uh, 
I'm excited about rye's gonna have a, a little bit of a a, a bitey ness to it. It'll be dry a little bit. So they said they aged this in a uh, uh, single Willet Rye whiskey barrel for 16 months. Um, Man. Let's. That's a lot of time. That is a lot Def of time. Definitely a sweeter. It smells less barrely, less woody. Oh, okay. Okay. It's a little bit better. Not a ton. I'm not jumping up and down. Charlie's yet. not a big guy. He's just a big fan of like the, the adjuncts. I'm an adjunct junkie. He wants a cake. Right. That's exactly that's <laughs> Almond it. Joys right. are my favorite. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's gosh, it's it's better than the first one. I'll give it that. So what uh, are we we're we're going off these on the untapped uh, leveling of best or worst to best or least liked to most liked. It's, I, I would say definitely the, the barrel characteristic comes out a little more. I kind of like that part. It's a little smokier, almost got a little smokiness Absolutely. to it. Absolutely. Um, it definitely doesn't clean the palate like the gin one did. Like it lingers a little bit more. <laughs> the gin right. wrecked my palate is what it did. <laughs> <laughs> you want to no, yeah, that a, gin was, a lightest um, one there? One of these? Yeah, a little integrin cutter. Oh, sorry. You you don't need you need another I, Montucky. No, Montucky cold snack kind of went quick. You know? Yeah, it's tasty. Little yeah, those bird. things are light and, uh, um, yeah, that that Montucky cold snack certainly is light. And Jake's or Josh is going to Montana, so guess what? He's going to be drinking the beer of Montana. So that is a lot. Like, I mean, the other one's a lot. Um, a lot drier, like you said. This one just, uh, just. I mean, it's super smooth though. That barrel is like yeah. for a rye barrel too. Like a, a lot of times, you'll get um, almost like a. <clears throat> I always think what I like rye IPAs are that's one of my favorites, and I just felt like it added to the hoppy bitterness of it. Yeah, and so the rye whiskey barrel, it has some of those same like characteristics to it, where it's got a little sharpness to it. It's got you know, um, but it's still subtle. It's a really I always, the longer it's in a barrel, the better. I just, that's kind of how I always feel. Like they, they talk about the 16 months, like two years probably be even better because you just get more of those flavors. And I think the more smoky flavors, like you yeah. don't get the first punch flavor, you get like the later aroma flavors and things like that coming out of it. So the, um, yeah, so Southern Grist and Horse, you know, speaking of, um, uh, Long time in a in a barrel. Um, Horace just released this set this week that had uh, a beer in there, like the longest barrel ride. I think it's thirty six really? months in a. It's just a Ooh. stout. It's been in a barrel for thirty six months. Wow! So the uh, it won't suck. <laughs> yeah, no, it should be pretty all right. I'm sure it'll be as long uh, as it didn't get any funk in it. It won't suck. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm sure his. Uh, I'm sure that set will be tasty. Interesting. I think there's four barrel aged beers. Wow! At least and no there. adjuncts. Some of them have adjuncts, some of them don't. I think I would like the ones that do. But you never know. You're willing to try, though. I'm willing to try everything once. Huh. Well, as in beer. <laughs> Josh, that's true. I didn't say anything. I just <laughs> said nothing. So what's, your, what's, your, what's your, your base from one to two? What are you, what are you saying? I definitely like the second one better. Um, I don't. I mean, I wasn't as sour on the gin as you were um because i do drink wicked. gin on occasion but it's i definitely like it's definitely more of a tradition the whiskey is more of a traditional smokiness that you find with the stout so it's it's much more like i don't know if, if anybody's never had a barrel aged stout i don't think i'd pop the gin one in front of them and be like here try it they would right. be more like eh. but if you right. like gin it would be definitely one that you could uh that, gonna go into that was on the margin of that beer we had last night or last show i don't know about that but that i was... think uh um i think this one's great um this is phenomenal i, I a little spicy i think that's that that rye, rye barrel in there yeah. um you know the taste a little no, spicy one was better the other one was I mean... really dry uh yeah i mean i think yeah i i agree with that like maybe not um you know turning somebody onto that first barrel and uh you know we'll see we'll see where they go from here I, I I certainly like um, I think barrel 
barrel or bottle two over uh, over bottle one. Yeah. yeah. Well, here we go. Number three. Okay. Now this one is the Willet Experimental Weeded Bourbon. And we're going to end up having all of these done here in about a... Uh, no, no, no. We'll take a little more time. I, oh, once 15. they're tasting better, you're, I'm sure you're going to be... <laughs> Char Charlie's racing through trying to find one that he likes so he can... Uh, <laughs> so, he, all. so he can just pause for a minute and breathe. Stop I'm getting popping there. bottles. This is this is number three, and I'm, I'm, I'm smelling a little better smell than I like. That I like. Oh. What do you got for... Uh, um, which one is this, Charlie? This is the Willet Experimental Weeded Bourbon. Weeded Bourbon Barrel. Have wow. you um that I like? Yeah. Now we're getting into that I like typical barrel aged bourbon stout. barrel. Right. Yeah. Okay, so turn me loose. Or probably not typical because like it's Willet. Right? Willet, Which but is no, a... but I mean in just terms of like the the flavor profile, like it's it's definitely getting we're getting into that sweetness is coming through yeah, more. It's a little more yeah. rich flavored. <clears throat> so it tastes to Charlie like it's got an adjunct. Almost. A little I maple think, syrupy. Right. No, kinda. I think they might have showed it maple syrup. You know, just waved it in front of the barrel. <clears throat> sure, yeah, not nearly, uh, not nearly, you know, not not nearly the spiciness that the rye added or the the, the super dry finish that you had on the uh, on that gin. I, I like this. That's a really good stout. I mean, it's, I think this one a little easier to like taste, like the 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 stout, or maybe it's just the you. chocolatiness of the the barley. It's like the roasted chocolatiness comes through. You know, it you don't need the adjunct now. Like it does it. It's just right. a good beer, right? Like it's they made a good beer, aged it in barrels, and now we get to enjoy it. Like this is definitely one that doesn't require any kind of blending or adjuncts at all. It's just it is what it is, and it's good. This right? Is, this is this is ripe. This is this is a great time. Whatever it's spent in the barrel, whatever barrel they used, and whatever anything else they used, it works. That's a great smelling, not overly bitter or ass, you know, yeah. acidic. Well, and you're getting like, I mean, if I'm, I'm now playing with the beer because I want to see how it lingers to the glass and it's it's sticking. It's, sticking. it's, it's like, like it doesn't even drip. Viscosity. It's like putting, yeah, the viscosity. It's just like hanging, hanging on, on to the, the edge of the glass, yeah. you know. My glass is now tinted. No, I like it. I like it a lot, actually. Yeah, that's really smooth. That's a really good. This uh, is definitely a, a good like. This one I could see myself drinking a whole bottle of it by myself on one Friday, Saturday afternoon, and just that if you can take your time with it, can being completely okay with it. Yeah, right. And it's gonna get it. like the thing is is like I'm trying to like warm it up over here a little bit, right? Because I think it's gonna actually taste better here in about five ten minutes. Yeah, as it warms up. I think so they the all warm, um, actually. Charlie, you got your temperature gauge by yeah. chance? Look at this. What am I running at? You're at uh, 80 degrees. 90, 99.7. That's this a high 60, temp. Or low 61. Temp. <laughs> Tag that. 60. Huh? <laughs> it's not a bad temp. Nope. I'll no, it's a that. really, I, I really like the, the, the stout. I mean, I think um, the, you know, it's difficult to, to taste, I think really the 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 beer through that gin barrel. Maybe it's just like not being familiar with like a gin barrel aged. I can't imagine. I, it doesn't always play well though. Like I I mean the best gin barrel aged beers I've had have always been like the sour. sours right. or even <clears throat> even uh, I've had I've had a lager that's aged in a gin barrel. It plays well to it. Like it, mm -hmm. it's playing to its strength at that point. Yeah, but a lager is going to be a dry. Gin is a particular alcohol that it if it's if it's not used correctly, it jacks everything up. I mean, I could drink gin, a good gin, and whatever in a drink, but I can't, if, I don't know, there's something about yeah. mixing it in with. I, I just think the gin fights the natural characteristics of a stout a little bit. Well, yeah. You don't want to, I don't want my stout to be dry. It's a white unless alcohol. It's a, unless it's a, it's a white lighter alcohol. stout, you know, like a light stout, like a 4.2 stout. Amber you know, stout, Irish stout, or something like that. I want that to end dry, um, but these like dessert these stouts, you know, fourteen percent. 
you're not you're not looking for a dry finish. You're looking for a chocolatey, hang on my tongue for a while, let me taste it three days later. Marshmallows, you know. graham crackers, right. and vanilla beans is what I'm so looking for. We'll just make some mores later, Charlie. They saying? made them last <laughs> night, but I like to drink some mores. I'm not a big fan of s'mores, but I like drinking them. But yeah. yeah. What do you think, Charlie? Which which one you got here? Um, now we're up to um, Knob Creek 15-year bourbon. Okay. And all these are waxed caps, so they're kind of pain in the butt to get to. We had a... But uh, I love the Southern Grist stamp on there. Had, we had a little opener that had a uh, wax cutter on there. and uh, Yeah, it kind of failed on us. We're, um, did they both fall out, or just not the wax? Wax just cutter's the, still the working. No, the wax right? cutter's there, but... But the uh, we're going to have to do some wow fixy-fixy there, me thinks. Chris wants to put some... Uh, you gotta duck, figure something out. Duck butter on there or something. Duck butter. Duck butter. <laughs> I think that's actually what I told him. This would work better with some duck butter. <laughs> Why don't you give me some of that duck butter? Hey, what's your whining? Fill her up. Oh, keep her coming. <clears throat> what are you waiting for? That's good. <laughs> now now you better. want a heavy pour. <laughs> getting better. That knob creek. Okay, now we're talking, boys. I, you know what? I'm going to pull out a, a regular horse after this is done, and we're just going to chug that thing. Just so you can get some adjuncts in your Yeah, system. just so I can get some vanilla to mix in there with the <laughs> cacao nibs and cacao. It's it's crazy. crazy. Brought some tar Tarani in. You could just, you know, a couple shots of French vanilla flavor. <laughs> yeah. <here. laughs> Just, just I, I got some uh, some uh, French vanilla mixer in the. Uh, I, I, know, I well I I I'm already like we got to the third one and like we're going in the right order. I haven't right. even tasted this one, but I took a whiff of it. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah, we definitely put these in the right order yeah. because I I I'm is there a little is there some of that gin left? There's plenty I, of that. I want to. I'm no. <laughs> there is plenty of the gin left, but it, afterwards I want to when we finish this I just want to go back to the gin. Because I want to see them, compare them a little, right? Because I think that gin's going to even feel more dry. Yeah, right. After like you know what I mean? Right. Like it's it's. You know what's going to happen? Chris going to do his own cuvier or cuvee there. He's going to dump them all into one I've, glass. I've been I've been doing that over here. Have you? Oh, yeah, my empty. He's I've been, ahead of you. I, I'm he making is, a uh, I'm making a blended stout over here. <laughs> as we I like this. it. I like it a lot. But the problem is, it's got more gin than anything else. Woo! I really like Ginned that. up. Like that's the that's the barrel that I'm looking for, and you get like, almost tastes like there's. A, I mean, it certainly like get wow. a lot of chocolate there. So much smoother. Some, here, here, this is what I think is crazy about this one. Just took a sip of it. It's my first sip. It's probably gonna get better as I sip it more. But if you you could probably tell somebody there was an adjunct in there, right. and they'd be like, oh yeah, yeah, I taste that. Right. You can you can almost taste like notes like vanilla. Vanilla yeah, certainly tastes like the chocolate. the chocolate, right? Oh, yeah, man. no, there's no, this one does taste like vanilla. It's smooth. Mm -hmm. it's that like kinda, a, that's a great leap and bound like over those two other ones. Though. Lighter in the booziness, I think. I mean, than the this, others. I mean, I know we've been drinking and I'm getting warm and fuzzy it's inside. What we do best, but this one just tastes like it's a pillow for your mouth. Like you just want to like rest on it and a just stout pillow. It just this now yeah. lingers on the tongue. Like I took a sip a while ago, and I'm even getting some dark cherry flavor now. Yeah, on my tongue as I'm like feeling it out. I had to wash it out. This a is bit. phenomenal. This one's really, really good. I'm washing with water and Montucky. Man, that is that's no joke. Yeah, no, those are good beers. I, I think uh, that's that's my favorite. I think you know so far. Yeah, well, um, good thing we got one we, more. We to just go. got a thumbs up from Tech Guy Steve. So. Well, okay, that I think guy, he, he doesn't know anything because he doesn't drink stouts or sours. No. <laughs> last last <laughs> night he supported this our is, show. This uh, is 42 shows in. That joke doesn't go very far. <laughs> <now>. <laughs> That's the best part about it. <laughs> Letting him just rip me afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> that is... I I love the simplistic idea. Like, we've basically, we've had the same beer. Mm -hmm. Right? This is what's fun about this, is it's the same beer, in four different barrels, and each of them have been drastically different from the other. Completely different. Completely different beer. Yep. And so I've always like, oh, what does the barrel age do to the beer? What is, you know, this is a fun 
adventure. Because that's not really what it is. It's like, how did this taste? And I'm glad they, I mean, I think when they did this, the idea was like, oh, let's make some blends and, and do some stuff. But it's fun that they just let it be what it is. Yep. I think it's going to make me second guess a lot of times when I see just the barrel aged beer. And I'm like, eh, what's the big deal of a beer being in that barrel or this barrel? And now I'm like, oh, dang it. Now I'm going to be buying more beer because I'm going to want to try that barrel. Modern Times does a lot of that, I, I think, with um, um, where they, they do different, you know, the, the same different things in, in numerous different barrels, right? Yeah. Well, they, they've uh, done, I mean, what do they call those those clay pots that they put stuff in? Amphoras, but I don't think they put a stout in those. That's no, they, just sours. Sours. But still, I mean, at some point they probably will. I was just looking, I, you know, just recently picked up. Not picked up. I'm picking it up next week. I'm a. Uh, let me look and see. I should be more prepared for this. But since we're talking about single barreled beers, they just came out with a set of single single barreled beers, and so I wanted to go through. What are they? I'm looking. Well, hey, you know what? Your internet out here may not be. No, it's up. just you know, it's I have too many beer emails to go through. Oh. <clears throat> I apologize for your emails. Let's see. Okay. It's a single barrel suitcase. Uncommon Raptor, which these what's are all that? Yeah, what's that going to be? Uh, Uncommon Raptor. Rare, Vol uh, Vulture, Rare Eagle or whatever. Um, Eagle Rare. Bovian Outline. Uh, Buffalo Trace. Handle Brook. Handle Brook. And Ellis Butte. Crest, um, Ellis. Ellis. They're all bourbon barrels. Wow. Ellis. So never heard of them. Uh, they can't. I mean, because because of their profile, they can't like use the name of the actual. West, oh, we, we the should barrels. do some research. We got to figure out what these are. Well, so bovine outline is certainly buffalo yeah. trace, yeah. right? And then rare eagle or whatever eagle rare is that uncommon raptor. Uncommon raptor, like eagle. Um, is there rare? Is, is it eagle? I don't really know. Uh, my rare eagle. It's rare eagle. Okay. Yeah, rare eagle. Yeah, and then. Elias Butte. What is it? How do you spell it? E L I A S S Butte. B U T T E. Right like in Montana. It's right on the tip of Montana. It's like Jeopardy. Elijah Craig. Yeah. <laughs> and then Handle Brook. Uh, Handle Brook. That's something like Water Creek. Knob Creek. Knob, Knob Creek, Creek, right. Right. Yeah. So. That, we yeah, just, no, we cracked just, the code. So, what was the, the, the second one was what, what was it? Uh, uh, Buffalo. Well, yeah, Buffalo Bovine Outline. Trace, yeah. But Eagle Rare, right? Yeah, I think that yeah. was the... Uh, what did they call it? E Uncommon Raptor. Uncommon. Yeah, that's got to be, right? So we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll, do, we'll double check those and we'll make some investigations on those. But we, Yeah, that's what I, it is. I, I, Uncommon I just picked Raptor, this Eagle up. Eagle Rare, 10 year. I just picked this up, so I feel like this is a podcast in and of itself as well. So. No, the Stoutcast. Stoutcast. Stout weird. Stoutcast. Weird how we're doing Stoutcasts. Mm -hmm. Look at Steve grab, trying to grab that bottle out of my hand. He's a monster. We've trained a monster. What did you, uh, which one's this one? Somebody else is going to have to read it because it's not in my hands anymore. It's Traverse the, uh, City Weeded Bourbon. Wheated Bourbon. Will wheated. Double? So I think this was the one that that rated the highest. Uh, yeah. You know, it's a a single. You know, the same imperial uh, stout, uh, aged in a single Traverse City wheated bourbon barrel for the same sixteen months. I just snorted some of it. You Did know? you? Yeah. Kind of, kind of good though. You get that. It's the sinus relief that you're going to mm -hmm. receive from. Totally. It. Okay, here we go. Smells delicious. Nope. The one before this was better than this. Knob is yours, huh? Yeah. Sorry. I like this one, too. It's good, but <clears throat> it, the other one was better. I, it doesn't have as many... Well, no. It doesn't have... I feel like the flavor... I would... I'll preface it with this. The Knob Creek could have ruined this one. Because I think the Knob Creek had so many flavors to it. Like, now we're tasting this one. It's kind of... So, I'm going to... I'm going to... I'm going to knock some pilsner back and lager yeah. and cleanse. Know, that was my yeah like i wanted to uh just kind of clear my palate a little bit a little cold snack clearing what do you think steve i don't think 
It doesn't have the same smell profile. No, it either. certainly doesn't. It doesn't smell nearly the barrel. It. No, it's not the. I, I I like that one. It would probably be number two. Yeah. Knob Creek was uh, much Knob better. Creek's. Knob Creek was your favorite. Yeah. Would you say? I'm gonna have to agree with that. It's ta- okay. So I just washed through. Ooh. It tastes. It does. I like it. It does. It doesn't have as much of a sweetness to it. Yep. As the Knob Creek. I like it too, but it's not as good as I the think other that, one. I, I mean, I will say no, this is Knob Creek's one. This is two. I think that Knob Creek was super smooth. You yeah. got a lot of like chocolatey flavors. You got like the, the really good, like the the barrel characteristics came through. It's, it, it almost tasted like vanilla in there. This one, I mean, I think has more, like it's boozier. I think, uh, you know, less barrel smell. It tastes a little boozier. Like it comes on really quick, but I think it dies out. So pretty. do this for me. This is what I just did because I like to do this when I drink stouts. So I, I drink it. Swirl it around a little bit. And I like breathe it out through my nose. It's like, and that's where that, there's definitely some booziness that comes out. The bourbon yeah. profile's coming out on that now. Yeah, we yeah. got one more sip here. So it's so I'm there. Gonna, I'm going to do it. I will way. say the, the Knob Creek has a more diverse, a more like, there's a lot more going on. The Knob Creek yeah. tasted like it had adjuncts. And this one just tastes like a really good bourbon. Yeah. I'm going to give it that. Yeah, this is phenomenal. It's like, great. once again, I could, like, had I had this one, or I would have been like, you know, before the Knob Creek, I would have been like, gosh, that's phenomenal. Yeah. Right? But it's, I, I mean, think the Knob Creek ruined this one a little bit. I think it's, I don't gr- think I, it ruined it. Well, I, mean, I just, just, in terms of like, you didn't, I think if we t- taste this before the Knob Creek, right. we would have tasted more of what it actually provides. But I'm, I keep might keep going back to like I want to have that knob creek. Right. One. <laughs> yeah. No. This I, I definitely taste a lot of chocolate in this one, but mm-hmm. not the. Um, I think you just got like the 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 knob creek just uh, certainly tasted like a lot of I have drunk. Some yeah, of it doesn't have the maple syrupy as much. It's not as. The, I taste the the barrel more when I'm breathing that out through my nose. I, but that's a good little tester. Yeah, I do, I like to do that because I, that kind of gets the, uh, the, the. I feel like I when I do that I get the barrel. Oh, so you are a mouth breather. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably because I talk too much, Charlie. <laughs> that's why we got you here. <laughs> no, that's really tasty. I think. I would say. Me, thanks. Knob Creek one, that one two, and the. The others in the order, just yeah, in the same order. order. Yep. I would just flip those. So you'd go Knob Creek, Traverse City, and then well, uh, then Jan, and then forget about Jan the other is two? at the very end. <laughs> he, he's going to water the grass with that gin one. <laughs> I'm not watering anything. I'm drinking a Montucky cold snack, and I'm going to make myself clear my palate. And we'll see what I get to this week. You know, We're going to drink some more beers, but... Uh, Let's hear what he had to drink this week. Yeah, what'd you have to drink this week? I had to uh, drink in... this week. Well, Charlie and I, we uh, last weekend, Charlie and I actually got. We've already to... gone over this. <laughs> no, go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> got to go to the anniversary. So I wasn't here last time you talked about it, but I'm gonna talk about it a little bit. No, it was great. Uh, they had some really good sours on tap. Uh huh. So um, I wish I had written down all the names. Did you get the ESB Wild? Yes. Absolutely, the best beer. That's yeah, come out I, of Bernie actually, beer I, I actually told Mike Moss, I was like, "Dude, you gotta, you gotta make that more often." That was actually very delicious. I would buy a bottle of that. <clears throat> yeah, and uh, so. you know, and and my new go to, uh, my new go to, you know, lawnmower beer is uh, BBR. BBR. It's, that's right. You picked up a big one. I, I, I don't think that's uh, public knowledge that I picked up a big one. <laughs> Now it, it is. is. Now. It's like I told Mike, I said, uh, I let out the BBR that you're canning it. And he goes, really? And I go, yeah. So like five people know. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, to it's me, it's, it's a good beer. Um, but they've, they've, I'm not surprised. They've made, they're, to me, one of the best uh, traditional style German breweries yeah. in San Diego. Hands down. I don't think there's anybody in San Diego that does it as well as in its consistently as them um i think i go back to where vultures fair 
That's another one of theirs that's really uh, good. I'm gonna say Jeff is great. Is pretty qualified. You know, I think Jeff though is like Jeff is phenomenal. Yeah, like, he's, well, he's uh, one of the best brewers. He in walked town, for me through sure. that whole ESB wild because I didn't even realize it. It just said ESB. It didn't say Banksy. He goes, yeah. "Did you get the wild Banksy?" And I'm like, "Where the hell's that at?" It's another one of theirs, man. I just they. I mean, like I said, San Diego. Like I think they're only. For me, the only other brewery I look at and go like, oh, they make a good German-style beer every time is Ennegrin, and that's all they make. It's right. really all they make. Ennegrin's good. Um, but in terms of, like, if you want a traditional good lager, Pilsner, um, and they still make the new age stuff, too. Like, they, yeah. they to me, they cover the gamut great. And so, um, yeah, that's... We're fortunate that we live in a town where you can get exactly what you want, pretty much. We're pretty fortunate, I'd say. You know, like I've said that, like for you know years. Like I, I mean, I feel like we've always been really fortunate. But like, I recently saw a map. Gosh, I'll, tr- I'll have to try and find it. But it was a breakdown of like states and how many breweries each state had. And we're still like, there's some states that have come like a long ways. But you still, you look at San Diego and like the 175 is more than a lot of states have. Yeah, yeah. Right. That we have like that we can decide like. Oh man, I have to drive to Vista for this brewery. I, like, I was, you don't have to drive across the state. Yeah, you know. I like, was like, it's. Uh, I was. I. I go back to when we first started into craft beer. You know, like the whole like burgeoning like Ballast Point Stone Brewing mm-hmm. when they came out, and like we were just kind of on the verge of it was like Portland and San Diego. Like who? And then and San Diego's just skyrocketed over the last couple of years, and it's just. I mean, I feel bad for anybody now that's trying to create a niche yeah. in San Diego. It's a, it's a tough road. I think it was a tough market. So, um, Well, I mean, you've got, you've got three, maybe four of the best breweries in the country here. You know, top 20. Yeah. I and, mean. You, and then beyond that, there's other breweries <laughs> in town that are super good at what they do, and that's what they do. Super and happy I, about it, but you I, know, like North Park Brewing, absolutely in my favorite place to go and drink hazies right now. And there's other breweries that make them, but these guys are cranking them out electronic. Like, they yeah. remind me a lot of the other half, which is in New York, and they're just popping out hazy after hazy, West Coast IPA after West Coast IPA. Yeah, super excited about that. Um, there's just so many breweries that we have to choose from here. And uh, Creative Creature just popped out another couple of beers that were super tasty looking. Haven't been out there, but I'm going to go grab some more of those. Yeah, I just, I mean, it's funny. It's hard for me to go out. Like, usually, like, you just want a good beer, right? So now it's, like, almost, like, hard for me to go out of the, the county when yeah. I go to the store. It's yeah. like, I, let's, I haven't even gone through the county. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I haven't gone through it all, you know. It's, it's we're, no, we're pretty fortunate. We're pretty fortunate to uh, to have the breweries that we have in well, San Diego. Well, heck breweries. we got Valley Farms. What's the place over here off Fletcher Parkway? That's another... The other farms. Fraser Farms. The, the yeah, Battle Fraser of Farms. Farms. And just great brewery, great beers in there from every brewery in the location here, but or local breweries. I, yeah, it, I could talk all day, but it's just like crazy, like what pops up here. And like, <laughs> I know it's awesome. You go like, holy, you know, it's like, I mean, <clears throat> just to go backstory, you're talking about North Park, North Park, when they first opened, I mean, I went right away. I was like, oh, North Park's great, you know, and I was just underwhelmed by them. Like they, I actually drank more of their guest beers than I did their beers. Yeah. The, the first time, the first time I went there. Yeah. But now it's like, it's the opposite. Like, I, I, it would be the opposite today if I walked in there, which is great because it's it's good to see, like, they started out a little, little rough go, and, like, they've adapted and grown. Overcame. And, you know, it's it's funny you should mention that because, like, I, I was trying to think um, when, when I – because I get my hair cut, like, a half a block from there, uh, and I thought kind of the same thing. Like, I was trying to think, like, how, like – Originally, when they when they had first opened, I went in there and and had a beer, and I was like, oh, this place is all right. And now I go in there and like, I mean, that's like my favorite, like probably it's probably one of my it's probably my favorite brewery in town to have a beer in because like just its location, like oh. where you sit, like you can look onto Thirtieth Street yep. and watch people go back and forth. 
right? So the people watching is great, yeah, it's a, a especially bustle. right now. Yeah. Um, so like that piece of it is is phenomenal. The um, and their beer is friggin' lights out. Like Which I don't is know that they like crazy because the first time I went in there, the fr- I I went we went in, I went in with my wife and a, a friend of ours. Right, like within two weeks of them opening, it was like, and we got their flight, and I was like, I remember tasting them and just like going like, eh, eh, yeah. eh. Here's you know, the deal, like, though. But it's, here's the deal: you can start at 30th Street at Bottle Craft, walk down to North Park Brewery, walk down to Original Forty within yeah five minutes. Speaking of what, you guys want to go for a walk? Yeah, <laughs> we'll go to a Little Miss right over here. I like it. Get the, some uh, sours. All right, so so back to topic. I mean, I think we, uh, Josh. What was your favorite as the guest? Uh, that, uh, that Knob Creek, that dude. Knob that's Creek. no joke. Yeah, Steve, Knob Creek, Charlie. Same thing. Yeah. I think I think uh, that Knob Creek was a consensus winner. I think the it tasted the most like other flavors are coming through, right? Well, it's the what, it's what you expect. I think it's it tastes mostly what you expect from a bourbon barrel aged stout. But a really good one. Like, I think all of those in a vacuum are very good stouts. Like, except for the gin, if, if, if you're, right. if you're talking, Charlie, gin, yeah, no. that but, gin one just was not. But all the other ones, I think if, if we hadn't had the Knob Creek, I think all of them, I would have tasted them. Like, oh, that's really good. But that Knob Creek, to me, that's by, it's a step above Did the Did you put them in that order? Good, I just I, I went job, back Steve. to that to that gin and even that's phenomenal. Like that's a really good beer. Yeah. Like the um, not as good as the Knob Creek. Not it's Knob for me as well. So I think Knob was the consensus winner. I think my my second favorite was the the follow on the Traverse City, um, and then I would probably go with the uh, Will it Will Rye. It? Yep, Will it Rye after that? Yeah. Like Which I, you like the Rye more than the Weeded? I, you know, I think like looking back at the spiciness, the spiciness of it, yeah. it was it was a little bit different. The um, the will like so, I yeah, they're probably pretty close. They are. I I felt like after the the next three, I would have put like Knob Creek's definitely one, Chin's definitely five. The other three, depending on the order I would have drank them, may have changed the yeah, order. Yeah, that's them right. In. Yeah, I'll I'll move back and. Uh, Maybe uh, maybe next session we'll uh, we'll talk about which ones we like more. So did you get this from Horace or Southern Grist? Southern Grist. This oh, is wow. uh, Indiana Nick sent me this. Yeah. Do you want to tell that little story about what we what we did when we went there? No, that's uh, well, that's for another episode. All right. Dang it! I don't fun. I don't remember. What I, we I did. I've made a, a blended over here. Ah. And I just I I we have more Knob Creek there, so I I. Pour that it. gin in there. So I'm gonna. I did gins in here. <laughs> you, you you want me to do a blended taste? Yeah, yeah, yeah so. want you. Let's hear it. So I think we did actually. Me and Charlie did end up at Southern Grist one day. We we met my nephew there for beers a few years ago. The blend's weird. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's so weird. We uh, yeah, it's probably because no, there's more gin in it than yeah, anything it's else. Funky. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I like it. We we actually had we we had the opportunity with their their head brewer to to have some beers with him. Uh, I had I had shared a. Um, a, a fundamental observation. Brought some beers for my nephew, and the girl was like, "Hey, if you uh, if you want me, you know, if you guys want me to throw one of those on ice, you know, if you guys want to pop one here." Uh, and I was like, "Hey, uh, throw this one on there." I had two like FOs for him. Um, so she gave one to the brewer, and the brewer's like, "What is this?" And she held up the bottle. That's like when you couldn't like you're simply not getting a bottle of FO in like in 2017 in Nashville on a Sunday morning. Yeah. So the Girly. so he was pretty excited. Um, so he went in the back and he was like, Hey guys, um, I've, uh, th- there's like eight people who have had this beer. We no. don't, we didn't yield enough. Wait a minute. He's, he came out and set these beers in front of us and he said six, seven, oh, right. eight. And we're like, what do you mean? He goes, you're the sixth person. You're the seventh person. And you're the eighth person. To like it's have tasty. this beer. And it was a super pop. It was this, they had foraged for, for the ingredients of this, uh, <laughs> of a sour, um, that they had, that they had popped. Maybe six months or eight months after that, they had um, they had brought some more. They just didn't. The yield wasn't very big, so they never released it. And then they did another on-site consumption of it, but it was phenomenal. It was like a um, May Pop, I think was the was, I want to say. Yeah. But it was really really good. There it was, was a great experience. That brewery was awesome. Plus, really the brewery cool brewery. was from Ohio, which 
You can't go wrong with it. Yeah, it was fun. Crew. It was a lot of fun, that trip was. So, yeah, that Nick went down there and picked these up for me and, and sent them out. Hey, man. Um, hey, man. Hey, man. Got you the Southern Grist set. Hey. <laughs> Have fun, What was man. the count on these? How many did they make? I don't know. I don't know. There's can't like, be like that a, many. You know, there not too many because there's only there's been like a hundred, a uh, hundred of each beer have been checked in right around. They, they may have two hundred. They may have had them at the brewery though too. Like you could have gotten a. Flight. You couldn't. No. Yeah. No. You weren't getting a flight. Yeah. No. It was just like a. It was like the box one or day nothing. sale. Yeah. Like two two fifty yeah. maybe. Dang. I like it. So no, I'm, I was super excited to be able to, uh, um, to get one here in San Diego it's and then to. Uh, you know, drink them all at one one snap. So that was fun. Thank, thanks for uh, swinging over, guys. Oh, thanks for having me. Until uh, until uh, next time. Cheers. Cheers. Well, I sincerely hope you enjoyed today's show. If you'd like to subscribe to the show via your favorite podcast player app, then head over to thepodcraft.com and look for the subscribe links. You can also get all the links mentioned in this podcast, pictures of all the beers, and other good information at thepodcraft.com. The site also has links to send us email feedback and to connect with us on social media. In closing, please continue to recommend the Podcraft Beer Show to your craft beer friends and family members in your life. The more the merrier. Thank you so much for sharing your time and attention with us. For Chris and Charlie, this is Tech Guy Steve, signing off for this week's The Podcraft Beer Show. Have a great rest of your day. The Podcraft Show is licensed under Creative Commons Attribution, Share Alike 4.0 International. All rights reserved 2020 through 2021. The show is produced by AztecMedia.net. If you have questions, then please email thepodcraftpodcast at gmail.com. Fair use notice. Reference material and media have been placed within this medium for informational, educational, and discussion purposes only, and compliance with fair use criteria established in Section 107 of the Copyright Act of 1976. It should also be noted that the opinions expressed on this podcast are those of the participants and are not endorsed by the participants' previous, current, or future employers or advertisers. You're still here? It's over. Go home. Go.